I feel like these openings are getting worse, not better. We're playing Shovel Knight. Cue obligatory history set. We're playing Shovel Knight! In doing the research for this review, me and my crack investigation team stumbled across some information which I figured would be more commonplace and talked about, but apparently not. Because you see, the history of this game goes back, I guess, a bit farther than most other people have talked about. See, the year was about 300 BCE or so, and an ancient druid, so ancient in fact that even at the time, people had forgotten his name and has been lost to the annals of time, foretold of a video game that would emerge and reinvigorate a genre, or even a, a medium, some would say. Of course, nobody knew what he was talking about, and they thought he was crazy, and they burned the guy. But... That game was Mother Fetching Mario! What's Mario? You've never played Mario? No, of course I haven't played it. This is like my third or fourth it's game a, ever. A super famous platform. I'm sorry, I don't know everything. You have a review channel and you've never even heard of yeah, Mario. that's why you hired me. It's because I was so naive about this stuff. But he's like super iconic. Well, don't complain to me when I don't know things. Alright, fine, fine. We'll talk about Shuffle Knight. You see, this Mario game kind of reinvigorated and saved the video game industry, and because of how great and revolutionary it was, it introduced a whole new generation of people into the video game medium. And decades later, people that grew up on those types of games, like Mario, or like this Zelda franchise, or even uh, Mega Man, I believe it is, decided that they wanted to reinvoke the spirit of those games in an era where such games weren't exactly commonplace anymore. Some of these people went on to form a studio known as Yacht Club Games, which ran a rather successful Kickstarter to fund their project. And then, after quite a bit of development time, they finally released Shovel Knight Upon the World, which was quite a success it seems, and they've come out with quite a few DLC add-ons which have also been rather successful. And to me it seems like they call themselves Yacht Club Games because of all the money they made from this game and they all buy yachts. Shovel Knight is often lauded as one of the best modern day 2D platformers, which suits my purpose is just fine for this video. Because I've been wanting to try out one of these indie games to see how they stack up to some of the bigger AAA games I've played, which isn't a lot because you know, this is like my third or fourth review. But, it also allows me to bite my teeth on the 2D platformer genre, which seems really fun, and I'd love to get it into. Not only that, but this game comes highly recommended by this review channel's patron saint, Timothy Henry. So let's skip everything else and just play Shovel Knight. So we all know naming your character in a game is super important and can even affect your character's stats sometimes. Most of the time. Maybe all the time? Whatever. So we really need a knightly name for our hero, something to really capture the spirit of someone chivalrous. I'm a genius. The game starts off with an intro cutscene that introduces us to Shovel Knight and his sweet companion, Shield Knight. And before the start of the game, they actually used to be kind of well renowned. But unfortunately, <sighs> tragedy struck Shovel Knight's life. And he took up plowing, because, you know, he obviously was going to need practice for when he obviously saved her at the end of the game. But before long, we get tossed into the first level. This game's going to get like a 0 out of 7 for me if the first thing we do isn't shoveling something. Yay! So after entering this first stage, uh, 
which does a rather good job of teaching us the ropes of what we will be able to do to shovel our way to victory. And it's nothing too difficult, but it's rather enjoyable. And all we really do is just leave a trail of bodies in our wake, which should upset me because it doesn't seem like a lengthy thing to do, but first off, there are animals. I guess it's fine. And second off, it's just a grand old time. And while this tutorial stage ends in a scuffle with Black Knight, who turns out to be our, I guess, rival in a sense, and he's just a slightly better version than us, and it subtly shows us some skills and abilities that we'll be able to obtain along the way. Good foreshadowing there, game. The first stop this game makes us take after the tutorial level is in this town, which you don't want to spend a lot of time in, but it does allow you to buy some health upgrades and mana upgrades. It also allows you to steal this little girl's toy. What a guy, Shovel Knight. What a guy. But before you know it, we're off on our real adventure. And you know what doesn't hurt this game, like, at all, is that along this whole quest, we're accompanied by this bumpin' soundtrack. And most, if not all, the songs have been stuck in my head at some points in my playthrough and the past couple days. And the best way to describe the soundtrack is imagine an already pre-existing killer soundtrack drank a gallon of Red Bull and hibernated in like an NES sound card for like a year. Cause it's full of energy and chiptoony as hell. And I love it. Now let's take on the first knight of the Order of the Quarter, who are essentially our chivalrous hero's main foil throughout the safe bit adventure. Alright, let's just make our way through King Knight's stage and... Is that a human? I don't know, our hero was down with murder. You don't deserve the title of Shovel Knight, you're more like... Perfect. Well, I guess now we have to deal with the fact that our hero isn't really a hero, and that all the digging he was doing at the beginning was so we'd have a place to hide all the bodies that'd be piling up along his adventure. But all that aside, make our way through the first two stages by slaughtering King Knight and Spectre Knight. And this opens up the next section of the map. Aw, oh, sweet man! A town! That allows us to buy some moves like Black Knight had. And is that an armory? Buy armor? Ah, uh, well, I think I'll pass for now, because I actually really like the colors of Shovel Knight's armor for now. But, I don't know, maybe later. So after leaving the town, we make our way to the next set of stages, which might be my favorite set in the entire game because they strike this really good balance of not being too easy, but also being challenging in a really rewarding way. That and aesthetically, I think they're pretty solid. Also remember that mystical druid from earlier, from like the history section? Well, I'm pretty sure one of these uh, programmers for this game was a reincarnation of that druid because they must have used some witchcraft in these game's controls because, well, controls in this game are TIGHT! I was pulling stuff off in this game that like, I didn't think I was going to be able to pull off especially with this being like my first duty platformer. I just felt like a pogoing god. After discovering our new 2D platforming prowess, we make our way through these stages and does what Squire Ho does best and just obliterate everything in his path. Except for this beetle and mole knight stage, because I'm pretty sure it's the only living thing that we meet in the stages that doesn't try and kill us and he actually tries and help us. So, you know, he's cool, so we let him live. No, nah. no, it's fine. No, nah, it's fine. I, I don't care. I really, I don't care. It's just, <sighs> you know, I see what you do there, Yacht Club Games. You decide to pull a Lion King, get me invested in something, and just axe him off right away. Bruh, it's cool. I don't care. It's a who cares about a sprite in a 2D platforming game where the story isn't even that deep? Oh, no, no, I, I, I got it. I, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> beat <all. laughs> So we eventually beat Treasure Knight, Plague Knight, and <gasps> Bull Knight, and move on to the next area in the game. People will be missed. This last area of the game is where I died a lot. No joke. Probably like 90% of my deaths were probably from these levels. That's probably just because I suck. Like, what? 
well, you know, I'm able to overcome them because I'm nothing if not persistent and kind and funny and cute. And after dying way too many times, we finally conquer these stages and, of course, Butcher, Propeller Knight, Polar Knight, and Tinker Knight. And we make our way to the tower where the Enchantress resides. And while this is the final dungeon, and I guess it should be the hardest, I feel like I had a tougher time with those previous three stages. I don't know, maybe that's just because I got better? Or maybe it's just luck. It's probably that one. At the end of these stages, we have our final bout with Black Knight, and... Wait a minute. We're Shovel Knight, because of our shovel. And all the other knights are named after the defining characteristics, like Propeller Knight, as a propeller, Mole Knight, digging around like a mole, Spectre Knight, and control the undead and has this undead vibe going on, so on and so forth. So does that mean Black Knight's defining characteristic is that his armor is black? I don't know. There's something I thought of, and it's probably not. But also in this final battle, Black Knight gets these sick wings that allow him to fly, which I saw and I was like, oh sweet, I'm going to be able to get those. I wasn't able to find them, so I was like, maybe if we just go back to that one town that had the armor that I thought he skipped over, I'll have it. Nope, nope, they don't have it. We just get this super big tease. I'm not impressed. Well, regardless, after gating the tower entrance with Black Knight, we might go away to the actual tower, but you know, without those red wings, probably would have helped. This level really puts everything we learned to the test, and actually ends with a boss gauntlet against the entire Order of No Quarter. By the way, since we're on the topic of the Order of No Quarter, and I guess all the knights in this game in general, who knighted these guys? Like, I've been to Britain and seen pretty much all the seasons of Game of Thrones, so I'm kind of the authority on knights and how they work. They're all appointed by someone, right? Like, someone sets aside some time in their day and knights them. So, two things happen. Either there's some really evil royal out there who's knighting these really bad blokes, and they should be the person we're really going after. Or, is there like some really incompetent royal who is just a terrible judge of character and has made only one knight who has never intentionally gone evil? Well, okay, I guess to if you want to count our hero, Shovel Knight. And if my math is correct, which to be fair, it probably isn't, this person at best has had an 18% success rate, which by the way is a failing grade. Oh look, the final boss! This battle was butt-clenching, but in like the most fun and best way possible. And after beating the Enchantress, we discovered that it was just the Enchantress possessing Shield Knight the entire time. And after regaining our true love back into our life, we tag-teamed the final form of the final boss And what may be the best fight in the entire game, which it's fitting, because you know it's the final boss, and I believe that's what they generally should be. And then after a grueling, intense battle, we finally get the sweet, sweet crap. And that was Shovel Knight. Well, at least the non-DLC campaign. Maybe we'll get to those in future videos if you guys like this one. But I have to admit, I actually had a really good time. Yeah, I, I died a lot, but I feel like most of that was on me. Everything else was pretty great. And the story wasn't anything to write home about. Yeah, we. We lost some friends along the way, but that's what happens in a, an adventure. And, you know, I really enjoyed the music, as I've said before, the platform was tight. It was just a really well-made game. And because of all that, I guess this random guy gives this game its official rating of... <sighs> There's this, like, mech in Tinker's Night stage that shoots these things out of a cannon that's made of wood, and I'm pretty sure I saw in an episode of Mythbusters that's impossible out of human cares at this point. Perfect. I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna drive. Doesn't even matter. Oh, if you want. <laughs> I'm just that anodized corporate overlord. 
been judged off screen by my roommate, because I guess that's cool. Whatever. Let us know what you thought of the review. <sighs> this is so hard. I can't do when I'm being looked off off screen. Let us know what you thought of it. What you liked, what you didn't like. Like, comment, subscribe. Who even cares? The person over there doesn't. Fine. What? Oh. Have a good day, everyone. How to be all awesome. in.